All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to be solving another question from the second chapter of the Mechanics and Materials by Baron Johnson. We have this link BD that is made of brass, so we have the elastic modulus for that, and has a cross-sectional area of 240 millimeters squared. We also have information for link CE. We know it's made of aluminum. We have the elastic modulus and also the area, 300 meters millimeters squared. And we know that they support rigid member ABC. So we need to determine the maximum force P that can be applied vertically at point A if the deflection of A is not to exceed 0.35 millimeters. So what we're going to do, we need the deformation diagram. But before that, let's just find out what deformation we have at point B and C. And we're going to go from there. So let's just see. I'll start with the free by diagram first to find the forces. So we have this member ABC. We have a force P in here. We're going to have forces at point BC too. So A, B, and let's just call this one. So the force that we're going to have in member BC, if we just consider the moment about point C, since we are in equilibrium, we have our moment equation. This will be the correct direction for member BD. But again, we can just consider any direction for now and we're going to figure it out later if the member is in tension or compression. And we're going to have the same force in member C. So as I mentioned, we are in equilibrium. We can use our equilibrium equations to find the force. We're going to start with moment about point C counterclockwise positive as always. So we're going to have the moment of the force P, which is going to be counterclockwise. So positive P times the distance that we have is basically the distance from A to C, 125 plus 225, which is going to be 350. I'm not going to do the unit conversion because it will be canceled out at the end. And we're going to have the moment of FBD. This one's clockwise, so negative minus FBD. And we have a distance between B and D which b and c which is 225 so 225 equals zero and now we can find fbd based on p which we just have to divide 350 by 225 and that's going to be 1.556 so now we have fbd based on p now we have to do the same thing for fc we have some of uh, all moments about point B this time. Again, counterclockwise positive. So this time, again, we have the moment of P about B counterclockwise. So positive, the distance from A and B, which is 125. And we have the moment of FCE. This one's clockwise. So negative FCE times the distance between B and C. Again, 225 equals zero. FCE will be this time 125 divided by 225 so 0.556 p and now we need to figure out the deflection of each point we know the deflection of b is the deflection of member bd we have that formula that we discussed in the channel over and over fbd times the length over the elastic modulus of BD times the length of BD. So the force was 1.556 P times the length of BD would be 225 millimeter. We have to do the unit conversion in here. So times 10 to the minus 3. And remember BD, the question said that the elastic modulus is 105 gigapascal. 105 times 10 to the 9. And the area was... 240 millimeters squared so 240 and we're going to do 10 to the minus 6 to get it in meters squared and let's just see what we get in here so 1.556 times 225 times 10 to the minus 3 and here 105 times 240 times 10 to the 3 so that's going to be 13.9 or 13.89 times 10 to the minus, I'm missing one zero in here, 240. 
so times 10 to the minus 9p. So now we have the deformation of B based on P. We're going to do the same thing for point C. This time we're going to have the deformation of member CE. Same formula, we're just going to replace the P that we got, 0.556P. The lengths of member CE is 150. Again, 150 times 10 to the minus 3. And we're going to have different elastic modulus, 72 and 300 for the cross-sectional area. So 10 to the minus 6, let's just calculate this to 0.556 times 150 times 10 to the minus 3 over 72 times 300 times 10 to the 3. So this is going to be 3.86 times 10 to the minus 9p. And we're going to move on to the deformation diagram in here. One thing that we keep in mind is that we really need to figure out if the member is in compression or tension. So the member FBDF, if you look at it, we'll see that the member in here is going to be in tension. And here the member CE in tension too. So for the diagram, what we can see, so at point P, we can see that if we just consider one zero line in here, so if that's our member, which is the forces that we have was the force P in here, we have the FBD in here and also FC in here. For plotting the deformation diagram, what we care about is moving of that point and the movement of the point is coming from the deformation in that member. So at point B, there is no member attached to point A. We have the force P and we're just going to consider the deformation that we have for point A, delta A, which is the given in the question 0.35 millimeter. And that's the maximum deformation that we can have uh, from the question. So it's not to exceed 0.35 millimeter. So that's the 0.35 that we have. We're going to have one deformation at point B, which we called it delta B. And since the member is in tension, this point, the deformation is going to be downward. Again, because the member in here is in tension. So getting to point B, we're going to have something like, uh, we can call this one delta B. And getting to point A, as I mentioned, the member is somewhere in here. So we can see the deformation is upward. So we're going to get to uh, somewhere like this. This has to be same slope though. So let's just consider something like this. And this is going to be our delta A. And this will be the same slope as I mentioned. If we just call them theta, it will be theta everywhere. And based on the slope that we have, we have to figure out our P because we have delta B and delta A based on uh, delta B. Uh, this one's delta C. I don't know why I call it delta A. So this will be our delta C. So A, B, C. So we figure delta B and delta C based on P. So we should be able to find. But how we're going to use this slope to figure out what we have in here. So we can do multiple things. Uh, basically, we can consider different triangles in here. Uh, one triangle that you can consider is this right triangle. Again, if that angle is theta, this one's theta too. And we know the length of B to C is, just get back in here, B to C is 225. So this is 225. That's one given that we have. We can also use another triangle here which is this one this angle is also theta so based on the green one tangent of theta would be uh, this side which is delta a plus delta c over this length which is 350 we already figured out in the previous step and if we look at the right triangle, again, we have the same tangent of theta. We're going to have this side, which is delta 
B plus delta C and over 225. And these two are the same. And we should be able to find P from this equation. So the way we're going to find it is that I'm just going to substitute the value that we have for delta A, which is uh, 0.35. We're going to do 10 to the minus 3 plus delta C, which was what we have in here, 3.86 times 10 to the minus 9 P over 350. And this will be equal to the red part. Delta B was 13.89 times 10 to the minus 9 P plus delta C, which is what we had in the previous step, 3.86 over 225. And we should be able to find P from here. So let's just calculate this. So I'm just going to keep this part on one side of the equation. And if we cross multiply these, what we're going to have is that. So 0 0.35 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 3.86 times 10 to the minus 9 P is equal to 350 over 225. Again, I didn't do unit conversion in here because it's basically dividing each of these by a thousand which won't make any difference in the equation. So we have 13.89 plus 3.86, which is going to be 7.75 times 10 to the minus 9p. So let's just multiply this by 350 divided by 225. So that's going to be 27.611 times 10 to the minus 9p. And we're going to keep this as it is. So I'm just going to bring this one on the right side, which is basically what we have in here, minus 3.86 so 23.75 times 10 to the minus 9p. So 35 divided by the answer. All right, so what I'm doing in here is 35 times 10 to the minus 5 is equal to 23.75 10 to the 9p. And our p would be the value that we have in here, 1.47, 4 times 10 to the 4, I'm just canceling these two out. So this will be basically 14.74 kilonewton, this was a newton, and that would be the maximum value that we have for P and the final answer for this question. Hope everything was clear. Let me know if you guys have any questions. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next video. Have a good one.